Good afternoon, my name is Bill Shriver from Merchants Garden. We're going to talk to you about produce safety today. And we're going to talk about worker health, hygiene, and training. First, we're going to talk about what, uh, what we're going to learn, the objectives that we're going to learn today. We're going to identify the potential routes of contamination associated with workers that result in contamination of fresh fruit and vegetables in produce fields and pack houses and greenhouses. We'll identify adult learning concepts that should be considered when developing training programs. And we'll also describe topics that must include worker training programs and what resources are needed to provide to reduce the risk of fresh produce and contaminations. We'll also describe how to monitor the facility in a and facilities that are available and maintain the appropriate health and hygiene practices and begin following by everyone on the farm. We'll describe correct act, corrective actions that can be taken when health and hygiene policies are not allowed or when facilities are not maintained. Identify the records and record keeping and tools that could be used to monitor and manage worker health hygiene training programs. Each module will, will uh, begin with assessing the risks, uh, the sides, outlines, and risks posed by workers. Workers can carry and introduce and spread contaminants of fresh... I'll oh, pause, there's an airplane going over here, sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. Uh, workers can carry and introduce and oh another jet's coming over spread contaminating I'll pause again sorry about that we are by the Air Force Base so sometimes the jets come in so we'll talk about human pathogens that can uh, be spread through many routes however uh, Fecal oral route is most common. This happens if a worker does not wash their hands after using the toilet and then handles produce and contaminants. I mean, that's one of the most important things is make sure you're washing your hands before you come to work and then wash your hands before you touch produce. Pathogens, path, pathogens can also spread through saliva, if you cough, uh, mucus, sneeze, uh, contact with other contaminated surfaces. For example, hands may become contaminated while eating, smoking, or seizing. Most uh, workers must wash their hands at times when their hands may have been become contaminated. So you're gonna wanna wash your hands after you go to the restroom or if you touch your face or something like that. Worker training should include how to wash your hands and workers should be given opportunities to practice skill in our bathrooms we have signs up how to wash your hands uh, day one we show them how to wash your hands how, how to prepare themselves for work workers must know what to do if they are ill or injured themselves while working we always tell them hey if, if you're not feeling good you're not don't please don't come into work today or if you get injured please notify us so we can do this so we can reduce the risk of human pathogens, like blood, if they cut themselves, we'll wanna know, hey, you know, where, where did you get cut? Did it contaminate any, any of the produce? And, the, and other bodily fluids, <coughs> like coughing right there, I coughed in my hands, probably need to go wash my hands. In any of these areas, and you know, in the, in the greenhouse or when we're packing out the, the lettuce. Remember that workers in training they, they receive are very important since workers play a key role in the farm food safety. So you've got to train them. You got to train them on day one. You know, train talk about it even in the hiring process. Uh, an example: outbreak, hepatitis A in green onions. You know, I'm not sure. You know, but the, you, as long as you do your best to try to clean your hands. You know that, and you know, wear masks, wear gloves. Chances of food contamination will be reduced. 
here are ways workers can introduce contaminated food. Fecal poop can be contaminated uh, produce directly. If workers go to the bathroom in the field or if uh, there's a leak in the sewage system, workers' hands can also cross-contaminate produce if they do not wash their hands after using the toilet or returning from a break or after eating or smoking and then handling produce. Another example of indirect contamination can occur when workers' clothing is contaminated by animal feces that can be transmitted to, to cover the produce food contact surfaces. When the workers and animals are handling manure, workers may need to use protective garments uh, and then remove that clothing uh, before they come into contact with the food consumer. Injuries, uh, if they cut themselves, you know, you're gonna wanna make sure that that fluid doesn't come in contact with the, the produce. Also, it's important to stress worker safety on the farm. You know, you, you can contaminate tools, equipment, if proper hygiene practices are not followed. Uh, in, in importance of training workers, fresh fruits and vegetables often receive no additional processing such as cooking or contamin uh, so contamination with pathogens can result in illness when the produce is consumed. Workers need to use food safety practices every day to reduce produce safety risks. Food safety practices are learned so training is key to successful implementation. Fresh fruit and vegetables often do not receive a kill step such as processing or cooking before they are consumed. Pathogens that contaminate produce can cause foodborne illnesses if they are consumed. Workers are a crucial part of any farm food safety plan because they are responsible for using food safety practices every day while they work. Food safety practices are learned, so training is key to successful implementation. Training can prevent, uh, present, can present challenges when implementing the farm's food safety plan. Time is money, so taking time to train workers means an investment in food safety. Making time for training may mean training right when workers are hired or communicating time each week are committing time each week to remind workers about key food safety issues. Any training should be provided in the workers' native language. This includes any written materials provided during the training. Keep in mind that some workers may not be able to read, even if material are printed in their native languages. Using pictures or showing workers what they need to do may be effective may be more effective than using written material. Most people are visual learners, so this is a good for everyone attending the training. Yeah, we always show them, you know, this is how you wash your hands, we, you gotta do it this way, take, this, take time to do that is very important. So, some farms bring an additional laborer at heights of harvest, when the things are busiest or on the farm, even during these times, new workers must be trained. So it's best to plan for workers training before things get too busy. So always train, you know. Don't don't say, oh, we're gonna train once a month or something. Always train when you hire someone. As an example of a variable of hygiene practice, toilet paper may end up in the garbage can or on the floor next to the toilet. Some workers are from countries where the plumbing is not sufficient to allow toilet paper to be disposed of in a toilet. So to avoid plumbing problems, they do, do not put toilet paper in the toilet. This heightens a hygiene practice that is different from the U.S. expectations. Understand that workers may have different hygiene practices. Address these expectations directly in training so workers know what to do while working on the farm or in the packing area. Many people, including workers, have preconceived notions about food safety. Understanding their current knowledge and beliefs 
can help address and display, dispel myths or reinforce core knowledge about why food safety policies and practices are important to follow. It, you gotta just and stress, stress it all the time, wash your hands, you know, hit them up with questions, you know, what do you do if you go to break, what, when you come back to work, what do you do? It, just continually keep hitting them up with these questions and training. Uh, adults need to understand why food safety practices are needed and training should be relevant to their jobs and their daily tasks. Outlining clear expectations, detailed practices, effective training material are present throughout the variety of training. You know, adults learn best when it's clear why the information, they, why, why are we teaching you this? Why do you need to know this? For this reason, it's important to know, explain the practices, reduce risk, and how these practices are relevant to each worker's job in order to, to complete them correctly. For the training to be effective, it should include reasons why food safety is relevant to workers and their jobs, outline clear expectations and detailed practices that reduce risk, Re be present throughout the variety of training media and methods through posters, verbal training. Yeah, we have posters out for how to wash hands. We train them, we walk through it, and we constantly remind employees how the importance of this. Provide an opportunity for uh, participants to practice the skill they are expected to use. I mean, it sounds funny, but wash your hands together, practice it with them. Include interactive and visual learning opportunities such as walking through the steps at a specific task or showing verbal short videos. Incorporate principles of adult education will make the training more effective. Communication. Good communication supports food safety by improving risk and identifies and identification and reduction. Trained workers know how to identify food safety risks how to reduce the risk they find, how to tell if they see food safety risks they cannot minimize or eliminate, that their food safety concerns will be taken seriously. Good communication is a two-way street, meaning everyone has the responsibility to share what they know and listen when others have information to share. Since workers handle fresh produce and are working in the field in packing areas daily, they are a valuable part of the food safety team since they can identify risk if they understand what risk they might see. Workers should understand that communicating food safety risk is a critical part of doing their job and reducing or eliminating a potential problem. Workers should be comfortable talking to their supervisors, managers, and know that their concerns will be taken seriously. If workers report a problem and it is not addressed, they may be less likely to report problems in the future. You know, you got to follow up. If they tell you you got a problem, you got to address the problem and take care of it. The Jets are back. All workers that handle or contact uh, produce need to be trained, you know, and, and even people that supervise. So we train all of our workers from the top to the bottom to receive food safety training. It's just important. Everyone who works on the farm should understand the company's food safety policies. It's, it's part of working here to know the policy. Paid workers, volunteers, interns, pesticide applicators, and even family members can impact, impact the safety of fresh produce. Anyone on the farm does not wash their hands properly, can contaminate produce and food contact surfaces through direct contact or spread contamination indirectly uh, to others who touch 
doorknobs or food saving. So it's important to train everybody. Anybody that comes on your farm, whether it's a family member, a contractor, you gotta wash your hands, you gotta follow our food safety practices. It doesn't matter who you are. We, we gotta you know, protect the services, protect the product, protect everyone from food safety issues. Everyone needs this training. And implementing food safety practices is um, a company-wide task. No, no, one, no one's above it and no one's below it. Everyone needs to know how to identify and reduce safe food safety practices they're responsible for doing. How to report food safety. Yeah. How, how do you, who do you talk to? How do you bring it up to someone? And make sure that the person that they bring it up to is actually following through on, on the issues. Owners, managers, supervisors should set good examples and follow the company policies. Training all members of the farm on food safety helps each employee know their responsibilities and helps identify potential risks that someone else may not see. Remember, everyone should be actively involved in identifying risks and reducing risks. Most importantly, owners, managers, and supervisors need to be committed to food safety and set good examples for workers and visitors to ensure that the policies are followed. In addition to training requirements for supervisors, for those that handle co uh, covered produce during covered activities require that at least one supervisor from the farm complete food safety training, or, or at least equivalent to the standard curriculum recognized by the FDA. This curriculum satisfies that requirement. Visitors to the farm must be made aware of food safety practices by setting the farm and visitors must access to the toilet and washing hand facilities. Policies can be reviewed with visitors, though the use of posters, handouts, short policy summaries, or verbal when they enter the farm. We have postings all over the place, wash your hands, uh, you know, all visitors must sign in with the office and, and uh, you know, we, we, we talk to them about food safety when they come here. Keep items to review with volunteers. Uh, understand that parts of the farm and packing areas, they can enter, you know, we don't let them just walk around anywhere, they're supervised, you know, if, if any worker finds someone who's not supervised, they're trained to bring them to the uh, supervisor's office so they're not to, to protect the food. We don't know what they're going to do or where they've been or you know where, where their hands have touched. You know, no pets are allowed. You know, food in certain areas only in the break rooms. All those things. Growers must make visitors aware of the farm's food safety policies. Provide access to toilet and hand washing facilities. Other key information for visitors should include areas of the farm they are allowed to visit, the importance of not visiting the farm when ill, how to wash their hands, instructions to keep pets at home. Training programs must include principles of food hygiene and food safety recognizing symptoms of foodborne illnesses and the importance of personal hygiene for all personal personnel and visitors. Other training and relevant to workers' jobs. Uh, all personnel who handle covered produce during covered activities or supervise the contact of such activities must receive training that include all of the following principles of food hygiene and food safety. The importance of health and personal hygiene for all personnel and visitors, including recognizing symptoms of health conditions that is reasonably likely to result in contamination of covered produce or food contact surfaces with microorganisms of public health significance. And the standards established by the FDA in subpart C through O of uh, this part of our applicable to employees' job responsibilities. 
you know, these principles of food hygiene and safety are very important. And recognizing the symptoms of foodborne illness and illnesses, the, the importance of personal hygiene for all personnel and visitors. A successful program will have these attributes. Training is required upon hiring, regardless when they arrive on the farm, and then at least once annually after hiring. Training must be 